Hello and welcome back to My Big Fat Mess. I'm Anthony Ferraro and today we are cooking my absolute favorite pasta dish of all times. Now I love pasta and I love gnocchi and I love heaps of sauces, but spaghetti carbonara is my absolute favorite. Not only because it tastes amazing if it's cooked right, but also because it's the most mysterious. It's the one with the shadiest of all the pasts. It's the one that you just don't know exactly the origin and where it came from, but we'll get to that later. So spaghetti. You can use any type of spaghetti you like. I like the garofalo. This is a Durham wheat pasta. It's the number nine in terms of the size. Uh, this one here will take roughly about 10 minutes to cook. Look at that, we can see it right there. Love it. Next, we're gonna need a good quality speck. Now, a speck or a cured pork or a thick bit of bacon uh, is what we're looking for. This one is the Bertocchi. It's really, really nice. Um, but why do I get this? It's this beautiful layer of fat. This is why it makes this pasta so yummy and what this pasta is all about. So if you can find something like that, um, you could even use guanciale, which is really nice, but this is kind of what we're going for. Nice layer of fat, plenty of meat. Then we need some parmigiano reggiano, which I've got a little bit here as well, which we're gonna use up. And you also need some pecorino romano. So this is a beautiful pecorino. This is a sheep's milk cheese, which just smells amazing. And wow, I can't tell you how good this smells. Eggs, um, plenty of cracked pepper. And then I like using shallots or spring onions, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you can also use parsley for this or you don't have to use anything at all. Have you noticed what's there? I'll tell you what's not there. Cream. You don't put cream in carbonara. And that's all. Please, people, no cream in carbonara, okay? Now that we've made that really clear, let's get cooking. So the, the key to obviously cooking is timing. Mise en place, French term for everything in its place. Get your prep ready first, so that way you can knock this up quite quickly. And if you do your prep work well, you can have this done in literally 15 minutes. So while we're doing all this, we'll get our pasta water off. First things first, let's get our speck or your ham or however you've got, we want this prepared. Now, if you can see this, it's got a lovely layer of skin, beautiful layer of fat. We want all that in there. So this dish here calls for nice, thick pieces. So kind of like so, get it all ready and then just like that, like that, and like that. And then we're gonna cube it up. We want it nice and chunky. If you want to learn how to use a knife and chop like a chef, it's very easy, guys. Hold your hands like so, pinch your pinky and your thumb together, and then put those three fingers in front of them. What you're doing now is this little chef grip, and what we do with that is we're running our knife along the flat part of our hands. So then when it's there, we can just literally chop. And you now cut your hands. Simple. Okay, I'm gonna finish cubing this up. All right, let's get our shallots ready. But like I said before, you can use parsley. I'm not a fan of parsley, and in this particular dish, I believe that the shallots work well. Um, with the shallots, look, just clean away these little bits on the edges, right? Which these will all come off nicely. I've got a full bunch here. We're not gonna use a full bunch. We're gonna use about six or seven stalks. So this is what they look like after they've had a bit of a clean. And then all we're gonna do is knock off the end there and we're gonna cut off a little bit of the ugly bits on the top and we'll use most of it. So a julienne is a nice, thin, long batten chopped. It's absolutely brilliant. Doesn't always work with these, but it's great. Now, like I said before, I like to use Parmigiano Reggiano and also Pecorino Romano, but I'm gonna be using a lot more Parmigiano than I do of the Pecorino. But, oh, mamma mia, if you could just smell how beautiful this is. Sheep, sheep milk cheese is amazing. We love it. I love it, you love it. It's beautiful. So I'm probably gonna do a ratio of two to one. So two parts of Parmigiano to one part of the Pecorino. Now, the eggs, room temperature, because what's gonna happen is we're gonna mix all this together, we're gonna beat it all up, and then we're gonna let the beautiful residual heat of the pasta actually do all the cooking of the egg for us. So if this was cold out of the fridge, you'd have to kind of keep it on the stove and it ruins the texture. Room temperature eggs always work well. And when you're cracking eggs, please, 
Do not bash them onto the corner of things, just nice and flat. What's happening is when you're doing it that way, you are pushing eggshells into your actual eggs and they go inside there. When you break it flat, it does not. I've always used a fork, not a whisk. It just seems to work a little bit better for me. And then I wanna put a nice, healthy, really super healthy amount of cheese because that is what we're gonna to use to finish it off. We love cracked pepper. Pepper, just go for it. Have a bit of fun, do a bit of a dance. It's called the pepper dance. Now notice I don't put any salt in here. This dish is going to be naturally heavily salted because of the amount of cheese. And we're using a dry salty cheese being pecorino and parmigiano. And we've got the salt that's coming out of our bacon as well, or the speck, or the guanciale, or uh, you know whatever you have available to you. So I'm gonna start on a really nice high heat. So it's called carbonara. Now, originally, it's hard to say where it's come from. The origins of this date back to 1840. So the, the derivative of the name comes from carbone in Italian, which means charcoal. So the charcoal workers would actually use this. Now, charcoal, we're talking lump charcoal. That used to be a profession back in the day. Now, these guys used to work super hard in really hot conditions. It was really strenuous work. So they would create this dish that is calorie rich, jam packed to keep them going, give them vitality. So that's one side of the mystery. The second side of the mystery with this, now this is hot because it's smoking. We're gonna get that in. And stir it nicely so it doesn't stick. And now that it's going through, I just gently turn down the heat to a seven or like a medium high flame. So the other side of this, uh, the name of the carbonara where it came from, it also refers back to uh, the carbonari, which was one of the earliest movements of Italian freedom fighters who actually were these charcoal makers, lump charcoal that is, um, who would actually escape in the tunnels and hide out and this is the stuff they would make themselves coming into the 1950s now around wartime and when the americans were around this is when it all started to change and it became i guess a little bit more chic and then it started to change with things like cream being put inside different herbs but it's a beautiful dish because we don't know its origin but i guess it's also a bit romantic you know um, you used to have to work really, really hard, and then you'd get fed a really big, hearty, calorie-rich meal. Now, a little trick. Look at that. Look at it boiling. It's bubbling away. Let's open that one up. Let's drop it now. Now, I'm going to salt that. I'm going to put a punch of salt in there. Now, I use the word punch because it's, it's literally a punch. And I always put the salt in last. Now, I want this to be a little bit less salty than Sea water. Now, if you just pay attention to here, see how we're rendering off all that fat really, really nicely? It's beautiful. This is now going to become part of the sauce, and we're getting some really nice caramelization on the actual speck as well. Now that that's bubbling away, we've got 10 minutes to finish our sauce and cook the pasta. The best way to open spaghetti, very simple. Put it on your bench, make sure that all of the slack is taken out, and then give it a nice whack. Open. That is how you open spaghetti, Italian style. And now we're gonna cook spaghetti, Italian style. Turn the heat down on this one here, but you can see the lovely caramel that's going on in there. It's delicious. We're gonna deglaze this with just a little bit of wine. Now you can use white wine, you can use even some champagne. You can even use a little bit of vodka. Just something to get all that beautiful color off there and into the sauce. We put the pasta inside the water. No break of the pasta. It's illegal in Italy, okay? The pasta goes in whole. Hold it there, give it a moment. Just allow it to gently soften. It does not take that long. As it's doing, come on in. I'm just going to gently, 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 gently let it go. And look how it all falls in there beautifully. Once it's in there, I'm going to allow that to sit for just a moment. Okay, stir the pasta, and then we set our timer. 10 minutes. 
It's only been in there for 30 seconds. I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes because this pasta I want al dente. You can cook it however you like, but I'm gonna have mine al dente. I like that little bit of bite, that crunch in the pasta when I'm eating it. So what you've probably noticed is that I don't put any oil in my pasta water. Come on in. You don't need to, okay? As long as you've got a nice rolling boil, which that is, it's beautiful, and every now and then you just give it a nice gentle stir, the pasta will not stick to itself. You don't need any extra olive oil or any type of lubrication on that. It'll do its thing. Come on in, have a look at this. Now you'll understand why I only put a little bit of oil in there just to get it going for lubrication so it doesn't stick. Because all that beautiful smoky um, uh, fat off the, uh, off the speck has been rendered down. Now you can hear that bubble, you can see it vigorous, you can see all of this. We are now going to start deglazing. Now I said you can deglaze with some white wine, with some Prosecco, um, probably a little bit of vermouth if you've got it, um, or even, in this case, cheeky little bit of vodka. It's nice, it's got high alcohol content, and it's just going to help us render out all that fat and also get all those chunky bits off, and they're going to be very, very nice. You know you're ready to deglaze when it starts to spit quite vigorously. That is all of the moisture and the water coming out of your protein through the curing process. And now, let's deglaze. Now you see the sizzle? Look at the color change. Oh, and you can probably even hear in the background, that's our pasta is ready to be cooked. Now look at that, just like magic, the color of the fat changes, it goes to like a beautiful golden and we're taking off all of that yumminess that's been caramelized onto the pan. That's why you deglaze. I'm gonna put a little bit of this pasta water in there. Now watch it change color instantly. This will now start to thicken up again. Now you see how it's gone a little bit murky? That is what we're looking for. A little bit murky, a little bit creamy. Al dente, perfect. We turn this off and we literally go straight from in here into our sauce. Because we want the pasta to retain that water. Now, I've got a pasta scoop or a pasta fork. Well, actually I don't even know what they're called. But I've got my pasta scoop ready to go. One of those, they're amazing. But if you don't have one of those, you can literally just strain it all into a colander. Okay? That goes in. And that now is the last of the pasta. Get it all mixed in there nicely. A little bit of a toss. Okay, the heat goes off. Now, the magic starts. We get the egg, and the egg goes in. The heat is now completely off. We are using all of the heat of the pasta and the pan to do the magic for us. And we're going to start mixing this in. And the egg is gonna cook nicely. You're gonna see it, it's gonna thicken up. All that cheese is gonna start dissolving. But you can see now how the egg is cooking absolutely beautifully. Now, I'm going to add my greens and cracked pepper, because this requires lots of cracked pepper. Stir that one through. Now, I like to put in either the parsley or the shallots at the end. I like them to go in raw because they add just that different dimension. I don't want them cooked out. Okay, now let's just plate it up. And like I said, this is half a kilo of pasta. We've got half a kilo of speck, and this is just enough for about four to five people. This will definitely feed the family and it'll keep everybody happy. A few extra greens, a nice healthy sprinkling of parmigiano and pecorino, and then plenty of cracked pepper. So there you have it. That is la carbonara. 
una spaghettata di carbonara. Spaghetti carbonara, the most mysterious, the most delicious, and the most amazing of all the pastas. This is my favorite. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. We're gonna eat now. Buon appetito.